Hello, this is Ryan from BetterTattooing.com, <clears throat> and today we're going to be talking about designs that fit the body. Hmm. Alright, now that that's done, designs that fit the body. More often than not, I'm starting to find people coming into the tattoo shop that want something that looks good, moves with them, sits well on top of the skin, and is somewhat influenced or even not influenced by the musculature underneath. So that's basically a design that fits the body. So why or what or how can we identify good designs that fit the body? <clears throat> first things first, look at the body. It's just a simple couple outlines here. We have an arm and a leg. More specifically, it's a forearm. That's a lower leg, calf area from the back, right? The lower leg. <clears throat> so when we're thinking about designs that fit the body, we're trying to think of stuff that takes into account not only the skin that's there, right, but also the structures that are underneath the skin that influence that skin on top, right? Every time you take a step, the muscles in the back of your leg are going to bend and move, <clears throat> contract, extend, all that stuff, and that's going to influence how that design is actually set on your body, right? Because if you take something, say on the leg specifically, <clears throat> and you put something that's around, we'll say like right at the top of the calf, Every time that you take a step, stand up on your tippy toes, move forward, you're running or whatever, you're going to have this contraction of these back muscles here. They're actually going to be pulling that foot down to move forward, right? So you're going to end up having kind of a compressing effect that's on there. <clears throat> Same with the spot in the back of the knee. When you pick it up, this is going to get smaller. It's going to get contracted, right? This leg bends, folds in on itself. This gets smaller. So like round objects will end up going oblong, ovoid, uh, and become a little bit less discernible or maybe translatable to the person who's looking at them. Same thing on the forearm. Look at the form of the flexors, extensors that move from the wrist up to the elbow, which is on a medium point that comes right across there. Let's grab a red marker here. As um, you bend or twist or move your arm, these muscles that run up and down are going to pivot that bone on the ulna, ulnar radial side, end up a little bit of twist, right? So you get a lot of torsional stress on this. If you have something that's really straight in the tattoo, <clears throat> while your arm is out and it looks good, as soon as your thumb comes in and twists, this is going to twist as well. And usually you're going to see that occur right about like the median line on the forearm, right? Anything below it as it gets closer to the thumb is going to end up twisting a lot. So designs that fit the body are things that are going to be taking into account your own biology as a tattoo client, right? It's not just about, you know, what's going to look good on a piece of paper. And in, like in, in my mind, ta custom tattoos are always going to be tattoos that are fit to the body, right? It's a custom design or custom artwork or something that can be done on an iPad or on a piece of paper, a canvas, whatever. But it's not it's not a tattoo. As soon as you take a design, it's on a 2D plane, right? X, Y plane on like a tablet or something. You take it and you bend it. You're adding dimension to it. It becomes completely different, right? So <clears throat> if we take a 2D design, we're trying to place it to a body that has a lot of contour, a lot of... Um, different stresses are imparted on it just from interacting with your environment, it's going to change the way they look. So how do we fit designs to the body? The first thing we're going to do is we come up with our idea, right? Whatever that idea is, idea, I can't multitask, you know this. Whatever that idea is, it has to be a rough kind of ephemeral concept, okay? That's just clients, tattooers, whatever. If you're coming up with an idea, you want to kind of come in with an empathy on that, right? It's not just going to be, let's do this. I mean, unless that is what you want. If you find a design online and you're just like, let's do this, that's fantastic. But if you have something that you're trying to fit custom and create custom for your body, it's a different process, right? So you want it to be like ethereal, right? You don't want to have any real form. You want to have a feeling, some guidelines to go from, or like start from with the design process and anything like that before you even move into doing the design process. You want to have something that's ephemeral, and you want to have a location. And with most people, location. Uh, I want to have an A and a B location with anything that we're going to be doing design-wise, because sometimes you can come up with this great idea, you do all the work, you develop it, it's great, but the spot that you want to fit it on just doesn't work, right? So always having a fallback that you'd be just as content having it, it's just kind of, it's going to save some headache or stress down a lot, right? So first thing is going to be the idea. Once we get to the location, we're going to have to do a map, right? Uh, body mapping is, we have an article on the website about this. We have two, actually, but <clears throat> some of them are long. Brave reading, rock and roll. Um, 
we get into mapping, what we're doing is we're looking at that person's individual biology, how they are constructed, how tall they are, how short they are, what their skin tone, complexion, you know, coloring is, like what their lifestyles are. Like we have to get an idea of the person, not just what we're looking at, but also how that like person is going to interact with that tattoo in their environment once they get it, right? That's a proper body mapping. It's not just, let's look at the space and how it moves. We wanna look at the space, how it moves, how it's gonna sit on this person, what this person does, and what it's gonna look like five or 10 years in the future, right? Maybe 20 years if you're like really going gung ho on that. <clears throat> a map is usually gonna consist of picking out those muscles like we had drawn in before, gastro and soleus, leading down towards rotational bits, and the fucking, I forget that thing's called, oh, Achilles tendon, and then, you know, say like the thick skin of the heel. Same with the forearm. We'll get flexors, extensors as they come up. Other things are going to roll over. And then what we're going to do is find blemishes inside the skin. Um, you can have, you know, pock marks or freckles or other things that may impede hyperpigmentation in general. Uh, that may impede in the actual design that you're trying to do based on the style that it is in each location. Well, let's say we have a big mole here, you know, or maybe there's a scar that's here. We want to identify those things and see how they're either going to work with or not be able to be tattooed or maybe be, you know, like be excluded, how, how they're going to influence the design when we're doing it. So once we have those two things, um, the musculature and the map, we also have to define our boundaries, right? Is this tattoo in their A or B spot only going to be relegated to this part of the calf, right? Or is it only going to be relegated to this part of the forearm? map that out because this is our boundaries that's going to be our size and definition and the next thing we're going to be doing is talking about well, we'll take that you get on a piece of paper you can do it with like an ipad you can take pictures whatever right? that'll be our basic map of the area that we're going to be doing and then what we're going to do is we're going to do viewability oh geez i spelled the hell out of that anyways <clears throat> viewability in a tattoo design really is one of the biggest things that people ignore when they're trying to fit a tattoo to the body our bodies are 3d Right, tattooing most often than not has been presented to you know clientele or other artists in a very two-dimensional way. Like you look at a piece of paper or a tablet, and like this is your design, this is what we're going to do. But when it's applied to the body, like we said before, those contours and stresses that you experience in everyday life are going to like totally change how you see that tattoo design. Right, so we got to think about viewability. It's not just two-dimensional. We got to think about tattooing not like painting or drawing, but more like sculpture. Right. If you go and you see the Pieta and you're on one side of it, it looks totally different than if you're on the other, right? That's, that's tattooing. Sometimes you can't see things from different areas. So viewability is going to be based off of four quadrants, right? You're going to have the front, the back, the inside, and the outside. I guess I could change that. Let's do this. F-I-B-O. FIBO. That works better. That's something I can remember. Yay. Anyways. We're going to FIBO that. And what this is, is depending on where the tattoo is done, we're thinking about the person away from it, the person who's not wearing the tattoo that's going to be interacting with it, right? Because like all of us know, if you get a tattoo the first, you know, two weeks, two months, two years, it's amazing and it's, oh, it's, it's new and it's something, you know, that you just are constantly drawn to and you want to interact with and probably touch too much while it's healing, which don't do that. But after a while, you end up just taking ownership of that tattoo, right? <clears throat> becomes a part of you. When it becomes a part of you, that tattoo is less likely to be recognized by you, just general fucking day-to-day -day stuff. You're more likely to be interacting with it when someone else from outside your place comes in and interacts with you. So if you're thinking about standing in line at like the grocery store or something, you have a tattoo on the back of your calf, somebody who's standing in front of you isn't going to be able to see it, right? So you're going to end up knocking out part of that, I guess, FIBO. Might as well go with that. <clears throat> But you still do have a chance to interact with people on the sides, right? If somebody's standing to the right of you or to the left of you, how much of that tattoo do you want them to see, right? So if we're going to be breaking this plane of viewability from one side, right, where it's just the back, and it's going to be coming around to the other side, how much do we want people to understand or translate when they see that piece, and how much do we want it to grab and grip them, right? If we don't want people to be interacting with the design, at all corners and points of the body, we've got to work really hard to ensure that when we're taking this mapping and we're setting these boundaries when we're doing the design, that it's going to be set within a space that people are only going to be able to react with it in that very specific position. So, if we're doing like a calf, I'll walk around someone, right? I'll look on the right, look on the left, 
find points or markers in that musculature on their skin that we can utilize to like set a boundary, right? Once that boundary is established, we have our sizing, we have our mapping, we have anything that's going on with blemishes or other types of skin conditions, we can actually start doing the design, right? That's set. That's simple, right? Yeah. That's how you fit designs of the body. Um, we could probably go way more into this, but I just did that off the dome, no script, rock and roll. So anyways, that's that. If you want to know more, check the website. I'll probably do another video here in a little bit. Anyways, this is Ryan from bettertattooing.com, signing off.